It's written as follows, Matthew Miller, Corin publishes Jerusalem for your vision and dedication to uplift the Jewish literary world. The gems published will remain everlasting gifts to Am Yisrael. Atir Kwanim Hanetzach Zo Yerushalayim. Mazal tov, mazal tov. Rav Avinair, Mrs. Moskowitz, Mati Dan, Daniel Luria. Thank you for your kindness in inviting us to this Motze Yom Yerushalayim dinner, which highlights what Atar Kohanim has accomplished and how much more there is to do. I'd like to begin by expressing some thanks. First, as my brother-in-law always likes to remind me to my wife and partner, Renee. For almost, <laughs> for almost four decades, we've shared a journey of living in America, England, and now finally at home in Yerushalayim. She, will, she has always been there with me, running by my side as we chased our dreams. Second, to my colleagues at Koren, it is no false modesty to say that what we've accomplished, not only in the past 55 years, but so much more intensely over the past decade, has truly been a collaborative effort. Professionally, I have never worked with a team so dedicated, so intelligent, and so passionate. When Mr. Koren founded this publishing house to produce the Tanakh Koren in 1962, he had three ideals, a commitment to halacha contextual accuracy, exquisite design at the service of bringing out the meaning of the text, and a profound sense of Zionism and the centrality of, Jew of Jerusalem. He himself designed the, uh, the Semel Yushalayim before me. I believe that my colleagues and I share and continue to expand this vision today. With our expansion of publishing activities into English-speaking countries over the past decade, we add one more objective, to build bridges between Israel and the diaspora through the exchange of ideas and texts. We're proud to have introduced the writings of, say, Rav Chaim Sabato, Rav Benny Lau, Rav Malamed, Sivan Rav Meir to English readers. And we have published the works of Rabbi Sachs, Sherry Mandel, Rav David Silber to Hebrew audiences. There are not so many of us Jews to go around. Let us try to bridge those distances in miles and language as best we can. And third, to the people of Atard Kohanim, who always carefully, always conscientiously work to reclaim the city of Jerusalem. When taken to visit homes in East Jerusalem, where the plaster was poured in to the holes left by the mezuzot of fleeing Jews, we saw that the return to Zion is not simply an abstract ideal. It's a reality that you tirelessly strive to achieve one home at a time. In publishing, we deal with words, their use and their misuse. Language, we know, changes over the years. Its meaning shifts in a variety of ways. I remember growing up when gay meant something happy and tweets were something that birds sang. Now there's something else entirely. But many of these changes are politically charged. Take, for example, the word settle. From the earliest conquests of Yehoshua to the success of Aliyot of the 20th century, to settle the land would be the noblest of acts, the highest of Zionist virtue. Today, it is decried as a mark of shame. A settler was once our greatest hero. Now, to so many, he is the most maligned of men. Here's another example, fundamentalist. Although it started off as a badge of honor, a self-designation of those who remain true to the faith, it has since the Scopes trial of 1927, has come to mean ignorance, mindless following of a Bible-based Jonestown of unenlightened fools who put their faith in an irrelevant work of fiction thousands of years ago. You know, the kind that believe in six days of creation and that the dinosaurs never existed, and they probably carry guns, but but, but the, but the Tanakh 
is far more subtle, far more sophisticated than is given credit. It does not tell of saints and villains, but of real men and real women. Our patriarchs' families were nothing if, were nothing if not dysfunctional. And the sinfulness of B'nai Yisrael is documented in meticulous detail. It is not the stuff of the usual ancient myth. The miracles described throughout the Tanakh, we at Koran are learning day by day in archaeology and in science, are not some sort of a Greek deus ex machina, but natural phenomenon, timed in a miraculous manner. If fundamentalism is taking the Bible at its word, so be it. We're card-carrying fundamentalists. I believe in the words of the Bible, the good and the bad, the sins and the miracle. How can we not believe when, those, when, we, see, when we see those moments when God intervenes to save his people? We who have lived through the miraculous rebirth of the Jewish state, the words of the Bible so vibrant and clear have become in the 20th and now 21st centuries remarkably real. Did not our parents' generation live to see Ezekiel's pro prophecy? These bones are the people of Israel. I will, bring you back to the, I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. And do we not see every day the vision of Zechariah? Old men and old women will sit again in the streets of Jerusalem, each man with his staff in his hand because of his age. And the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing in the streets. The words of the prophets are becoming true before our very eyes. And we cannot but rejoice in their very fulfillment. We have heard all this week about the miracle of the Six-Day War and the unification of Jerusalem. These are events of biblical proportion, no less miraculous than the days of the exodus of David and Shlomo and Esther. But God works his miracles now as he did then through us. And now as then, let us accomplish great things. I commend to Tered Kohanim on its critical work, striving to fulfill the prophecies of old. Let Jerusalem flourish and once again, let Jerusalem be the light unto the nations. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you very much.